So I just finished my morning swim at Baker Beach here in San Francisco and found this guy washed up on shore. It's hard to say exactly what happened, but it is a reminder that I'm swimming in a food chain. So I'm going to use this as an excuse for us to look at the teeth and jaws of the white shark and what makes them specialized enough to hunt pinnipeds. Welcome to Shark Minutes. This isn't the first time that I've been reminded that we're sharing the ocean with predators and their food. For example, this guy in Monterey had the telltale marks of a shark bite on him and was recovering when I came up from scuba diving. There are many things that make the white shark a uniquely adapted predator, such as the fact that it can regulate its body temperature, which is why we find it in oceans all over the world, but we do very commonly find them in waters that are shared by one of their favorite food sources, pinnipeds. And yes, the size of the white shark is a big reason that it's able to hunt pinnipeds, but the jaw structure and the teeth design is another reason. This is a well-known shark named Zapata in Guadalupe, and he's gonna help us learn about the white shark teeth. In this shot, he looks like a grandpa with no upper teeth. But here he is, that same day, same trip, and all of a sudden he has teeth. What happened here? You may notice that you can almost always see the lower teeth of the white shark, but not the top teeth of the white shark. The upper jaw of the white shark is actually able to come unhinged from the skull and move forward. So what happens is the bottom teeth stick into the prey while the top teeth come forward, closing together, and then the shark uses his powerful head to shake off a bite-sized chunk. Sometimes it's not even necessary for them to shake their head because the teeth are so sharp that when they come together, whatever they're biting is severed immediately. Here's another cool fact about the white shark's teeth. Most people know that sharks lose their teeth over time and the multiple rows provide them new teeth, but that doesn't mean that as soon as a shark tooth is broken, one pops up. Instead, it's a conveyor belt where they move forward, move forward, move forward until they finally fall out. And I was fortunate enough to see this on footage of a white shark tooth rotated so far forward that we capture it in the moment that it falls out without anything actually hitting it. That's enough for this quick episode of Shark Minutes, but I'm gonna leave you with some thoughts. While it might be frightening to be reminded that white sharks are in the waters eating things, we can actually take encouragement by realizing what it is that they want to eat and that we're left alone so often. As Chris Fallows puts it, if white sharks wanted to eat us, we would die every time we went in the ocean. Make sure to get your White Shark Cafe and Shark Minute shirts at whitesharkvideo.com.